Welcome to the Tea of Life podcast, where our mission is to transform every attitude of life by encouraging and equipping you to live the life you love and love the life you live. I am your host, Tiffany Thompson. And today we have Brandon, my awesome, sexy husband, who actually looks like Jeff Bridges right now with the way that your hair is growing out and your beard. I, hey, I will take <laughs> I will take that compliment. I've never found myself attracted to Jeff Bridges, but maybe, I don't know. (laughs) Okay. That can be taken the wrong way (laughs) and the right way. The dude. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, here I am. So, last week we talked with April, and she's been my co-host for the past year and a half. And if you listen to that episode, you will know that um, April is not going to be with us anymore for the podcast. She has decided that it's a lot. Doing the podcast, it takes a lot of time. It takes a big investment. And she um, has younger children than I have. She's homeschooling full-time. She actually, um, she works. And she just has a lot of other stuff going on right now with family. And she needed to take a little bit of a break. And that's okay. Because I also told her she's more than welcome to come back and talk about anything that she wants to talk about. As Tiffany was kind of going through this transition that was was happening, um, we did a lot of talking. And um, one of the things that I, I really think is cool from this transition is um, T of Life podcast talks a lot about how we should follow our passions, follow our dreams, um, follow what it is that, um, that we want to do in life. And then there's been a lot of advice, too, about saying no to certain things so you can say yes to other things. And who are we to basically sit here and talk about this stuff and not actually do any of it personally? So for April, it's really practicing what she's been preaching for a while now. So I I think that it's really cool um, that that even though that's it's hard to take a transition – to walk away from something, it can be hard. You're saying yes. She's saying yes to her family. She's saying yes to what she has going on in her life. And she's simplifying. And it's hard for us because Tea of Life, a big part of Tea of Life podcast has been April. But uh, the whole time, you know, the husbands are in the background too. So Conrad's <laughs> been doing a ton. Yes. Um, I've been doing some things here and there. And um, and as, as April's transitioning off... Um, and a large part, Conrad too. We're taking the the things that they were doing, and um, we're gonna gonna run with that. And so there's been some transition. It's been great. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've been working together on this thing for for a few days, kind of getting some things squared away, and and uh, looking at what maybe T of Life Podcast 2.5 might look like. <laughs> Right, right, and I'm really excited. We've got some new music, as you've heard, with the new intro, and we've got a lot of people lined up who are actually going to come in and maybe co-host a, an episode or two or three with me. And we have a lot of um, interviews that we have lined up that I'm really excited about. And yeah, so we have one guy who actually is in Singapore who contacted me to ask if he could be on the podcast, and I'm really, really excited about this. That's going to be fun. Of course, it's over Skype. I know, I know, I know. But it's, and you got to work really out cool. the, the time differences. Yeah, and, it's 12 hours. So yeah. he might be recording at midnight and you're at noon. So that's going to be really cool. Yeah, so this transition with April, it was no easy decision for her. Just like with us, um, with anything that we love and we have to say no to, it's no easy transition. So... When we actually say no to something, we're actually able to say yes to something else. And so we feel like when a good opportunity comes along, that it may be a a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Well, there could be some once-in-a-lifetime opportunities that you're actually giving up in order to say yes to this one. It could be our kids. You know, they come around once in a lifetime. That is so true. Uh, In fact, I I was listening to something this morning Reggie Joyner, who's part of Orange and used to be um, part of the North Point staff, Reggie's doing some incredible things um, with helping parents become better parents earlier in life. Um, all too often, I think parents, we get better 
as we get older, and we hopefully we get better as we get older. <laughs> I thought you said we get bitter as we get older. <laughs> no. So Reggie's got this uh, this really neat analogy he's talking about some new training where he's talking about marbles. And um, basically the idea is they're giving parents a jar of marbles. Um, the marble jar has approximately 986, something like that, marbles in it, which corresponds to the number of weeks that we have. 986 in, weeks. In our, like that's the amount of weeks of influence that we have before they're out of the house. So what he's basically saying is that when a child is born... Until the child leaves the house at approximately 18 or so? Something like that. There's 986 weeks between those two events. That doesn't... It seems, wow. it seems like a lot when you look at a, no, you look at a jar of, of marbles, because I was watching a video. It doesn't look like a lot, because he's holding it in his hands. And you, you hold... When you hold a jar of marbles, and, you're in, and each one represents one week of their life... And what you do is, as a parent, you're going to pull a marble out of this jar. Every week, you give them a marble. And you start to realize how quickly you can lose these weeks of influence in their life. And I don't know, I just, I was sitting here and I was watching this video going, this is, this is incredible. Um, because the amount of time, the amount of influence that we have on our kids is limited. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're out of the house and yeah, they come and visit and yeah, they might call and, and there's relationships that last past when they leave the house. But, um, we have a limited window into our kids' lives. And so saying yes to our kids should be the most important thing that we do. So saying no to other things that take time away, that's where you have to make some hard decisions. Absolutely. And, you and I are involved in scouting, which you actually used to be our cub master for the pack that we were involved in. And you had a really great visual that you would show the parents whenever parents would come and, and be interested in maybe joining our pack or um, you would have a meeting for the parents. You would have this yardstick that mm-hmm. you would use to show them the amount of time that we have to influence our children. The yardstick example basically was saying, hey, this is Kip's, this is Cub Scout years. Mm-hmm. These are the years that you can spend together um, in scouting. We've talked about scouting before. Tiffany's talked about scouting before in the podcast. But it's it's so great because it, it creates great citizens. It creates um, people who understand the world and understand um, how things work and what patriotism is and what it means to serve, and mm-hmm. what it means to do a good turn. Mm-hmm. And it teaches you basic life skills. Um, and in those times, scouting is always a family activity. And there's even this controversy going on now. It's like girls and Cub Scouts. Guess mm-hmm. what, people? Girls have always been a part of Cub Scouts. Right. Because family has always been a huge contributing part of what scouting, especially Cub Scouting, means. And so it's always been a family activity. And so families who almost, you could say this, families that scout together, like really grow up tight together. And we've seen that happen um, a number of times. We've seen families that really attach themselves to scouting and, and they end up a lot closer later in life. But the, because people have realized and that family has realized that the time that they have with their children is so small that they better go ahead and invest it mm-hmm. every way that they can. Right. And what better way than on a weekly basis in a structured group of people. Right. So there's my little right. soapbox on scouting. But um, really saying yes to family and saying yes to the kids is so important. Right. One of the things that our pastor actually says is that your greatest contribution to the kingdom of heaven may not be what you do, but who you raise. That's deep. Yeah. Think of how many times that breaks. Right. In this country nowadays. And, and you know, for the first five years that a child is born, their main influence are the parents or the people that they live with in their home. 
And then once they start school and they're there for six hours, eight hours, you know, they start having other influences come into their life. Yeah, those first five years, that's the nurturing years. That's where their personality is developed. And then past that five years, you get into like where they're learning and they're learning about life and the rules of being a, a human and being a good human. And then and then they start to have influence from other people. And that's when all the other parenting kind of comes out and you realize where things have gone right mm-hmm. in their lives, hopefully. <laughs> you also learn a lot about yourself and your parenting and learn a lot about the way that you may handle things or may do things and things that you never even saw in yourself before because we can see our kids acting a certain way at a certain time, maybe even scold them for it or praise them for it, depending on what it is. And we may think, oh, wow, that's great. You did a great job. I know you learned that from me. But then when they do something really bad, we think, where did you learn that from? All all too often, they've learned it from us. (laughs) For sure. Uh. (laughs) Yeah. So I think that your kids are um, probably the best reflection of who we are as parents than anything else. So one of the things that we actually might do as parents when our kids are young is we might actually break their ability to say no. So when we tell them, you know, pick up your toys when they're two years old and they turn around and they say no, well, obviously they still need to pick up their toys. But we tend to punish them because they said no instead of punishing them because they didn't pick up their toys. We'll say things like, don't you say no to me, or don't you tell me no, or whatever. You know, what we're dealing with here is defiance and picking up the toys, not the fact that they said no. We teach them that over and over and over again, so when they reach their adult year, they've been told, don't you say no to me, or don't you tell me no so many times that they don't want to say no anymore. So they're beginning to say yes to different things. And we live in a culture to where we don't like to be told no ourselves. We don't like to say no. We have the FOMO, the fear of missing out. So we don't want to say no, so we say yes to everything. And we start to become overwhelmed, stressed. You know, we're at the end of our rope. We become depressed. And we need to practice saying no. We need to be okay with saying no. And saying no is not the end. It's actually the beginning. Because when we say no to the things that we cannot or should not be doing, then we can say yes to the things that we can And should be doing. And I also want to say that just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. You know, there's also a social side to this whole equation of saying no versus saying yes. That as a country, people want to hear us say yes. Mm. But when we say no, um, I think a lot of times it, it sounds like rejection. It sounds like we're saying no, I don't like you, or no, that's a terrible idea, or no, why were you, why were you saying that in the first place? And that's just not true. Um, it's almost as if Americans have lost our thick skin in mm-hmm. a way. We tend to wear emotions on our sleeves so much, so saying yes is such an easy thing to do, and it, and it when you say yes to somebody you'll get the feel goods. Mm -hmm. But when you say no, I mean, you're never going to get the feels goods from somebody (laughs) from saying no. Right. But I think that it's because we've taken no as a personal, almost like a personal attack. And that's not the case. Like, let's say you're working on a project and you have to say no to the project. It's easy for somebody to go, you don't like me. You said no to my project. Mm -hmm. That's not the case. We're saying no because we've got this and this and this going on that I'm not going to sit there and explain everything that's going on in Department X and Department Z. But when you're able to say no, freely say no, and not have somebody just jump down on you and wonder why you said no... um, I just think that uh, as Americans, we've kind of lost the art of saying no without it may- being some sort of a personal attack. Right. We've lost the art of accepting the word no as well. Yes. Yeah, saying it 
and accepting it probably yeah, those are the same. It's the same struggle. So we may struggle with saying no because we're afraid that the person's going to be upset with us or mad with us. So we feel the obligation to say yes. So NewYorkTimes.com has an article about saying no so you can say yes. And in this article, the guy actually wrote himself a rejection letter. And in this letter, he was explaining that learning to say no is incredibly important. But it's also important to understand why we say it. As we learn to say no to certain projects, we're left with more room to give an emphatic yes to other ones. And then there's another guy that we follow, Leo Babata, and we know him from following The Minimalist. So he has a website called zenhabits.net, and he says that saying yes is not really saying yes. He says that saying yes to everything means that you really have time for nothing. You can't possibly say yes to everything because where will you fit it all? Want to go to every meeting, every event, and every coffee? Want to do every project that comes along? Your days will be crazy and you will have no rest. And what's more, you'll likely not meet your obligations. That brings up an interesting study in what we call opportunity costs. Mm. When we say yes to too many things, we're actually, in effect, we're minimizing the other things that we're working on in life. So the opportunity cost of saying yes means that you have to say no to maybe the quality of your work that you're doing in another project. So if you say yes to too many things, now how many plates do you have spinning? Mm -hmm. Now how many... um, Projects may you have to shelf in order to complete what your favorite person has asked you to do. So saying no allows you to actually do what you say you're going to do, finish what you say you're going to start, and complete projects that otherwise may have gotten shelved. When we talk about opportunity costs, I think we can also talk about things with our kids. So opportunity costs of saying yes to something, when you apply it to our family, when you say yes to, I don't know, going out of town on some event, which I'm going to put my hand up and say I've been guilty of, I've done it, the money seemed like it was more important at the time. So if we apply this concept of opportunity cost to our families, when you think about your calendar, you look at the things going on in your calendar, and birthday parties, um, extra work events, um, side projects, whatever you've got going on in your life. Opportunity cost means that if I say yes to taking an extra gig, then I'm having to say no to my family because maybe I'm out of town or I'm gone for hours and hours on end. Um, And kids see that. Mm -hmm. They see when we're present and when we're not present. So saying no to more things, clearing our schedules, clearing our calendars allows us to say yes, or just not even say yes, but just to be present um, in our families, in our kids' lives. Mm -hmm. Like bringing this back to the decision that that April has found herself making with the the Tea of Life podcast, she is able to spend more time with her family. Because, I mean, you guys worked... A lot. And it's not that I'm not spending time with my family. My family is in a different age category. (laughs) We're in a different season of life. And so I, I do spend time with my family just on a, it's, it looks different for us than it does for them. I know. And you don't have to, you don't have to defend your, your amount of time you're spending because to get something off the ground, like a podcast, it takes a lot of time. Yes. But I will say you guys were spending a lot of time on it, um, individually, so in your own lives, you're, you're spending time researching, getting ready for interviews, finding out things about the host. the, the Stalking everyone. Fi- you were finding out <laughs> things about the people who were going to be on your podcast. Um, you were investing in yourself and time, um, learning how to better the podcast, um, how to network with other people who do podcasting, um, just improving the quality of the podcast, which is important because um, you got to 
you have to put time in in order to get off the ground and get going. But I think that at the same time, when you say, okay, this is important, like for you, Tiffany, the podcast is important, your family's important, God's important, our time at church is important. Um, not in that order. Not in that order. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm just like, yeah. they're popping up. So it's just popping up here. Um, the things that are important, you can have a few things there. But when it's, I don't know, if it's 20 things that are all important to you and you have to say yes to, then your time is stretched and there's opportunity cost involved in every one of those. So I think that we just have to really, really consider things when something pops up, an opportunity pops up or whatever, and we have to say no. We have to just learn how to say no. We've got Mm -hmm. too much going on. Right. And Leo says on his website zenhabits.net. He also says that if you can't say heck yeah, then you need to say no. <laughs> so if it doesn't excite you the moment mm-hmm. that something pops up, then right. you just need to say If no. your yes cannot be a heck yeah, actually he says hell yeah, but <laughs> then you need to say no. So Tiffany, what would you say to somebody who's listening to the podcast and they're like, okay, this is all great. I'm hearing lots of things about saying no or saying yes. What can I do to simplify my life in terms of what's going on? Yes versus no. How do I look at my list of things going on? How do I look at activities the kids are doing and learn how to say no to those? What are the, what's the criteria that I need to be thinking through in my head? Well, we heard one and that is if you can't emphatically say yes to something, you might as well not do it. So April and I came up with eight simple steps and the first, the very first step is stop. So basically the first thing that you want to do is you want to stop. Step two is to step back. And then as the steps progress, we get to survey your surroundings. So you want to take a look at what's going on around you. Then at that point, you can figure out what you need to say yes to and what you need to say no to. If you just stop what you're doing and just step back and then survey your surroundings, that should be able to tell you a lot about where you are as far as saying yes to things that you shouldn't be saying yes to. Or maybe there are things that you should be saying yes to that you've been saying no to. We can say no too much as well. I would say that if, um, if you think about the things that can bring you joy in life, um, if there's anything that is not bringing you joy in life... <laughs> it's pretty safe to say that you don't need to be doing it. Right. You can say no to that. Now, um, the workout, you probably should continue to say yes to because that's that's an important thing to do, um, even though it may not bring you uh, a lot of joy in the morning. That reminds me of the KonMari method, the life-changing method of tidying up. She actually says that the way to declutter your house is to actually go and take each individual thing and touch it and look at it and say, does this thing bring me joy? And if it does not, then you get it out. <laughs> You've talked about this before. <laughs> I've heard you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is very much the same application. So simplifying our lives, minimizing and minimalism has a lot to do with saying no. And learning the power of saying no to the things that we don't need and saying yes to the things that we absolutely do need mm-hmm. in our lives. In effect, minimalism, when it comes to our schedule, is really putting the important things first and the things that don't matter as much second, third, fourth, and then saying no to the things that don't bring us joy at all. So thanks for listening, everybody. I mean, we're really excited about what this new direction can be. Um, Hopefully you noticed that we're changing up some music. There's Mm -hmm. been been some tweaks to the website. Um, And um, Tiffany has some great stuff coming up. And I'm along for the ride, too. And um, I may be in the background, but I'm always cheering you on. Well, I hope to have you on more. So... Our listeners out there, too, I know that there's a lot of people out there who actually, they have their own stories to tell. And we also want to be a platform for just the normal, everyday person. 
And we love being able to encourage you to love your life. Sometimes that means changing it, and sometimes that means making a choice to love it right where it's at. We exist to encourage you to love your life, and everything we talk about points in that direction. So we are here to encourage you today to be able to say no to certain things in your life so that you can say yes to other things in your life that are more important, that matter more. So we at Tea of Life Podcast want to seek out normal, everyday people and allow them to share their stories to help encourage everyone else in their journey. Now you may say, wow, Brandon, Tiffany, my story, it's not like crazy. But guess what? There are people out there that would probably love to hear your story because they're in the same exact place that you are and that can be powerful right so thank you guys for listening today we hope that this encourages you and we look forward to seeing you next monday take care everybody If you like Tea of Life podcast and you've got two friends who want to create the life that they love to live, tell them about us. Find us on your favorite social media platform like Facebook or Instagram. Also, right now before you forget, go to Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts and search for Tea of Life podcast. Hit the subscribe button and never miss an episode. Thank you for listening to Tea of Life podcast. We'll see you next Monday.